Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Friday, January 7th. So you guys are getting me on that drought. I'm still in pajamas, haven't done a lick of nothing to myself. Um, I was like, eh, I'm just gonna turn the camera on because I'll be honest, I have like these little hairs right here that just wanna stick up. Um, sometimes by the time I do like all my morning stuff and then get myself ready, I'm just like, I don't feel like doing the video. <laughs> so let me do it now while I still feel like doing it, right? But no, I would have done one today. I'm off work today. Um, the arbitration went fine yesterday. No issues. So that was good because, man, I, I take those days and run with it because most days we always have some sort of issue. Um, my third cup of coffee for today, so I'm sure I'll be waking up here pretty soon. Really, I'm just in love with that cappuccino from Juvalia, Um, where you put the, it's basically coffee and milk. And it's even like my go-to drink now at Starbucks. I found, Bill got me a mocha from McDonald's like two weeks ago. Way too sweet now. I used to love that drink. I can't drink it now. That cappuccino is so good. So, last night, I... What did I watch while I was still? Oh, I watched the latest episode of the Sex and the City reboot. And just like that, I think that's what it's called. I'm liking that show. A lot of people have mixed reviews or don't like it. I like it. Um, and last night's episode was good. And so I did. I worked more on... I watched that. And then what else did I watch? Because, oh, I... Ca I I'm still getting through season six of The Sopranos because I have an HBO Max subscription. So, excuse me. So I have been getting through that, watching that. I mean, I've seen all of The Sopranos before, but I don't really remember season six very much. So, yeah. So, of course, I worked on my Fruit of Plenty sampler. This is on 18 Count Ada by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie in Jello Shots using uh, Sulky Black and Sulky 0192, which the color is plum something. I'm gonna tell you what, it's, I think it's funny that they've named all the colors. Um, let's see, when I put in 0192, it's gonna come up. Plum Dandy, how about that, Plum Dandy? And I have it all linked in the description box below. But I got, quite a bit done at least what I think quite a bit done you know it's it's tedious it's it's time consuming like I stitch for a couple hours but you know you're working on the project this up close like you're working on it like that right and then I went to the bathroom or something and I came back and I looked at it back here and I was like oh my god it's gonna look so good it is going to look fantastical it's gonna look so good I am so glad that I finally, yes, my hissing cat. I am so glad that it took me, you know, four tries or whatever to get to that point. Um, loving it very much. And it's funny because Bill came in from work yesterday and he sits down in the chair and he's like, ooh, I like that um, color combination. And he said, are you sure it's going to fit? Like, did you measure? Because he knows how with like Phoenix... I've had some issues with fabric measuring in the past. So I busted out laughing and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I've already measured it. And then what else did I do? I stitched till like 11. And then I went downstairs and I watched some Golden Girls and I went to bed. I got to bed much earlier than I have been. I haven't been getting to bed till like 2 in the morning. I mean, that's just crazy pants. And then... um my phone buzzing this morning woke me up early. We got some snow overnight. We got about three inches of snow on the ground, I would say. And our lovely neighbor on this side, who is probably one of the most hardworking men that I've ever encountered in my life, the plow had come through. Um, and you know, when a plow comes through, they push snow. So it pushed it like in front of our driveway and in front of our mailbox. And when Bill, before Bill left for work this morning at five, 
he shoveled like our walkway and everything. And our neighbor shoveled in front of our driveway, in front of our mailbox. So that was very nice. And Bill's like, I'm going to text him. <laughs> and I said, because he's going to be like, how'd you know I shoveled that? Because me, I saw him out the kitchen window. But yeah, hardworking man. That is a hardworking man. Really nice guy. Whenever I see him outside, he's always like, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah. Um, I started reading a new book that Jill sent me as a gift called Seven Dirty Secrets. So it's a young adult book. It's these kids that I don't know what grade they're in. It's this girl's birthday. She has a box, a present, a surprise present that sends her on a scavenger hunt with her best friend. And the year before, her boyfriend died in a rafting accident that they all were on the gr this group water rafting trip. Well, apparently, it didn't quite happen how you think it happened. So, someone knows something and they're sending her on a scavenger hunt that turns out to not be... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, someone trying to, like, kill them or something, I guess. So yeah. Okay. I did receive some gifts yesterday in the mail because I didn't check the mail until after this video was done. So I received a toilet nightlight from Judy. I'm pretty sure it was Judy because she emailed me. There was no, she even said there's no note in the box. <laughs> I'm going to put this on today on my, on the toilet downstairs in my bathroom. So thank you, Judy, for that. And then from Mary Bazoyan, I received another book called Stuff You Should Know. So this could be in upcoming videos. And then I received, and I don't know who sent it because there was a little note, but it says, I thought of you as soon as I saw this and how you love gadgets. I know you read on Kindle mostly but also enjoy books too, meaning hardcover books. Thank you for creating and sharing. And so I open the package and I see this. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> so I went and searched the Etsy store where she got this and it is a book page holder. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And this woman has some gorgeous ones on her site. So what it, I'm gonna show you. You set it like that. So it'll hold your book open, right? Or you can like put it on your finger, like on your thumb like this. And just as you're reading the book, like let's say I was reading this book and I wanted to keep it open instead of me, my finger trying to hold it, this will hold it open. Um, it's such a neat concept. And yeah, I love gadgets. I've never, ever heard of this. Um, it's gorgeous though. I absolutely, this would be, this would be a nice little addition, like if you had a coffee table book of like artwork or something and people just, you wanted people to just, when they sit down to look at it, you could get one of these and just keep it open. And then when someone picks it up and looks at the page, wherever they stop, they could put it down. Do you know what I mean? So whoever you are, thank you. Like I said, your name was not on here, so I couldn't properly thank you. I will link the shop down below. It is called Nico Nico Sakura. There it is. Um, so thank you very much for all of those lovely gifts. And as promised, we're going to do a true crime story today. Yes, indeedy, because we haven't done one in over a week or more. Okay. So I haven't done diamond painting or coloring in a couple days. I've, I've literally just been focusing on the cross stitch. Oh, Bill is not playing poker tomorrow. So there went my night of Danielle. <laughs> and I asked him why. I'm like, why are you not doing it? He's like, he, he just said, I don't feel like it. I'm like, all right. So. Okay, then. So this true crime story is about Vegas Bray. U.S. Navy recruit Vegas Bray was 25 years old, single, and attractive. 
She was the subject of many an admiring glance on the San Diego Naval Base where she was stationed, glances that she chose mostly to ignore. Vegas wasn't about who, that is such a cool name though. Like, can you imagine if your name was Vegas? Let's go, right? Vegas wasn't about to fall for the first sailor who cast a lecherous glance in her direction. She had aspirations. The man who won her heart would have to be someone special. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I just remembered something I meant to tell you guys. My dad called me this morning. Now, my dad is like Ward Cleaver in the 1950s in Leave it to Beaver. Okay? He's very old fashioned in that regard. It took him, he just got like a smartphone, a cell phone last year. Um, up until then he had a flip phone. Yeah. Um, and there is a bakery in our town that has been around for, I want to say like 70 years. Like it has been around since my grandparents first came here and lived here. This bakery, their donuts are legendary. Um, I personally, I don't know if I've even ever had a donut from there. We've had breakfast there a handful of times. I mean, the last time I was there was when I first got together with Bill. We never go there. But once a week, my dad goes there for donuts. And so he's talking to me when he's pulling in and he says, Oh my God, the parking lot is like a parking lot meaning it's packed, it's full, right? He goes, oh Lord. So we get off the phone because he is going in and I'm like, well, have a good day. I'll just talk to you whenever. Um, he called me back like three minutes later and he's like, I had to walk out of the store. What? The cook didn't show up to work. He said, it is chaos, a madhouse in there. 50 people in line wanting sandwiches and there's three people trying to do it and people that aren't the cook, you know, and oh my God, to hear him tell it, I was like, well, I guess you didn't get donuts. He's like, no, I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I'm going to get donuts there. But, um, he said one of the women in there was like, yeah, that bastard didn't show up and my dad doesn't cuss. Like, I've never heard him say the F word. I've heard him say like ass, bitch, you know, that kind of stuff. Like rarely though, like it is not just in his, it's just not in his vocabulary. Now my stepmom, on the other hand, she's like me <laughs> in that regard. Um, but it was just so funny to hear him like be like Jesus Christ, like I cannot go in this store. And I'm guessing because there's probably no school today because of the weather. People want donuts. They want, yeah. Okay. So that was a little side note. I meant to tell that story at the beginning and forgot. Okay. So in fact, Vegas had no intention of dating a sailor at all until she met Victor Salcedo or Salcedo. Now, Victor, here was a guy who lived up to her vision of Mr. Wright. Tall and handsome. The 29 year old was renowned for his positive can do attitude his sunny, outgoing personality. Known as sauce to his large circle of friends, Victor was a people magnet. Folks were just attracted to him. Mm, excuse me. He and Vegas got talking one night at a bar frequented by servicemen and women. By the end of that evening, Vegas was smitten and she knew that she had found the one. So how does this go horribly awry? Because obviously it does, there wouldn't be a story. But Vegas would soon learn that there was a price to be paid for dating the most popular guy on base. Everyone wanted a piece of Victor. He seemed to run into friends and acquaintances at every turn and maintain platonic friendships with several ex-girlfriends. He also had a seven-year-old son and was devoted to the boy and on good terms with the child's mother. None of this sat very well with Vegas. She was a possessive woman by nature. Victor would soon find that out. Oh boy. So she should have just, you're not coming between a person and their child. If he had that good of a relationship with the child, that's not happening. 
If you're going to be with that man, you need to learn to accept that, right? During the early months of their relationship, Vegas became increasingly demanding of her boyfriend's time. Victor, never one to court confrontation, did what he could to accommodate her demands. He stopped going out as much, stopped hanging with his buddies, devoted most of his free time to his lover. Yet even this wasn't enough to placate Vegas. Having detached Victor from his friend, she now started demanding that he see less of his son. This, of course, was never going to fly. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. You know, <coughs> one of the biggest things that I, you know, I've tried to impart to my stepdaughter because, you know, I'm not her mother and I, I pick and choose what advice I, I, I give because, I mean, we're all flawed humans. I have made many mistakes in my life, right? But one thing I do know over the course of having three or four long-term relationships is that you cannot go into a relationship thinking you're going to change the other person. If you do not like how they behave or what they do when you first are with them, then don't be with them. Um, I think that is one of the biggest mistakes that women and or men, that men are, you know, they can be the same way. Why would you want to be with somebody to try to change them? You know what I mean? Like what attra what has attracted to that person to you in the first place? So Vegas, did all of that to say Vegas knew how Victor was when they got together. And the fact that she tries to keep him, I mean, she doesn't she have her own life? You know what I mean? Like I've never been the kind of person either, and this is just me, to say to Bill, you're not going here, you're not doing that. I don't think I've ever told him no. Um, if he says, like poker, he says, oh, I'm going to play poker Saturday night. Okay. I mean, I guess other women or wives would be like, no, Saturday night's for me. You need to be home with me. I got stuff I can do. <laughs> I am never, like, bored. I got stuff I can do. I don't mind being by myself. And I think that's the key, too, is that I don't mind being alone. I can read, I can stitch, diamond paint, just sit and do nothing. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, when Bill goes on fishing trips or he's outside all day long. And another thing too, when Bill and I are apart, like if he would go, cause he's gone, our neighbor on this side has a boat and he actually has gone once or twice on an overnight trip with him. I am not the kind of person that texts and calls him all day long. Um, when he went to Tennessee to visit his sister before she passed, and then when he went for the funeral and everything, he calls me in the morning when he gets up and then I said, okay, just call me tonight before you go to bed. So I talked to him twice a day, just see how the day went. I'm not going to bug you, I have never been even with my first husband, I was never like that. I was never that kind of person. So obviously Vegas is though, which isn't obviously going to bode well for either her or Victor apparently. Okay, so of course, Victor seeing less of his son was never gonna fly, right? This of course, yeah, was never going to fly. So unable to get her way, Vegas then started flying into jealous rages, accusing Victor of sleeping with the boy's mother. Oi, oi, oi. You know, here's another thing too, trust. If you cannot trust your partner, um, you need to not be with them. I would not have had any inkling in my head that Bill would have been sleeping with my, um, his daughter's mother. That thought, even though they are, they're on good terms and have a good relationship, because you do that for your child, right? Um... Yeah, and that's why for me, and well, you're getting all kinds of little tidbits and stories from me today. That's why I am the kind of person that if you cheat on me, we're done. I don't care if we're married for 30 years or whatever, we're done because I can't be that person. I can't be that person that is then turning into the one that checks your cell phone, looking at your emails whenever you leave the house thinking about, are you really going where you say you're going? No, mm -mm. I'm not, I can't live my life like that. 
And it's funny because my stepfather, when we were at my mom's for Christmas Eve, I forget how we got talking about it. We got talking about people cheating or something. He was like, oh, you would forgive Bill. You would take him back. No, I would not. He didn't believe me. Try me. You know, like, that's why I've always said to Bill, you ever cheat, I better never find out. I better never find out because like I said, and I love my husband. I love Bill very much. But let me tell you, I also learned from my first marriage when I decided to ask my husband to tell him we were going to separate because we had been arguing every day for the last three months of our marriage. And I just couldn't take it anymore. I just, I'm like, what are we doing here? And I was only 28 years old. Um, I left with $50 and my personal belongings, which wasn't very much. My stuff from my office, my books, my clothes. Um, and I had even borrowed money. I had even went so far as I borrowed money from my mom and my grandfather. We were behind on our mortgage. So money was, was one of our issues, him and I. I had even borrowed money to catch up the mortgage because my, and my grandfather couldn't understand that. He's like, why are you concerned about his bills? I said, I just can't, I need to be able to be at peace with myself when I leave, right? Given that this was my decision, he didn't want a divorce. He didn't want to separate. It was my choice. So, but <laughs> later after we were divorced, which by the way, I paid for, didn't hire an attorney. You know, we didn't have any assets to divide. We didn't have any children. So it was very straightforward. So, but when we were married, now mind you, I also took $25,000 in credit card debt with me that we had. And then I filed bankruptcy like a year after that. Oh yeah. I mean, my life was a mess for a while um, when that happened. I lived with my mom for six months until I could get my own apartment. It was, it was a very difficult time. And in Maryland, you have to be separated for a year before you can even file for divorce. So we were separated for a year before I could even do it. Um, I forgot where I was going with that though. Oh, money. Okay. So when we were married, now mind you, I took the $25,000 in credit card debt, right? About $10,000 of that was him rebuilding a Shelby Cobra, which is like, a vintage sports car or whatever. After, now what's so funny is, you know, he kind of bad mouthed me afterwards, which I, I thought was very childish. Like I never said anything poor about him once we were done. And he had been starting to redo our kitchen. And I never forget this because he had been putting in cabinets. I mean, he was doing it from the ground up. And when his family heard that we were divorcing, his grandmother was like, oh, and he was putting in that kitchen for her. What? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? That doesn't matter a lick of nothing. What? I was just like, oh, so I'm supposed to stay because you're putting in a new kitchen. No? <laughs> um, so, but down the road, like a couple years, I learned that he sold that car for 50 grand. What? Dude. And you know, my name was on the deed of the house. Uh, he refinanced and I had to go sign papers. I really could have been a fucking asshole and been like, guess what? I'm getting part of this house. So you're going to have to give me money. I could have sued him for alimony. I could have done because he made more than me. I just, my peace. I needed my peace. And my peace to me, and you know, because I have had struggles, I knew that I could pick myself up and, and make something of myself, or make something of my life, taking $50 and my personal belongings. I didn't even care about the shit. Like, I don't care about furniture and stuff like that. I didn't have anything until I got my apartment. And then I was um, buying used furniture. Yeah, uh, it was... My life now, right now, is the best it has ever been as far as my financial status, um, my job. I've made, I make more now than I've ever made. I mean, I have paid my goddamn dues. 
So, boy, that I did not expect to be telling all of that. But um, all of that to say, women, <laughs> Vegas, um, don't have yourself wrapped up in a man. Just don't do it. Don't, don't do it. That's why when I go to these retreats, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, okay. You're learning, learning about me today. All right. So she was accusing Victor of sleeping with the boy's mother. That was when Victor realized that their relationship wasn't going to work out. Oh, I bet he realized it a long time before that. So in December, 2011, he told Vegas that he was moving on. What year were they together? It doesn't say how long they were together. So Vegas took the breakup hard. Yeah. At first, she simply refused to accept that it was over. Then she started plaguing Victor with texts and phone calls, begging him to take her back. And you know what's funny? When I was married to my first husband and when I was in my long-term relationship before that, where I was supposed to get married to that person, but he cheated, we didn't have cell phones then. So there was none of that. Like you couldn't text somebody or anything. I can't even imagine. So she swore that she would change and insisted that they were soulmates that's destined to be together. Victor, though, was unmoved. So, yeah. He says, I don't want to hurt you, but this isn't going to work. I hope we can still be friends. So him by him saying that, it only served to feed the rage that was bubbling up inside Vegas. So she must kill him because there's a story. In early 2012, Victor resigned from the U.S. Navy. He had enjoyed his time in the military, but now he was ready for a new challenge. His heart was set on a career as a police officer, and to this extent, he had enrolled at a local university to study for a law degree. Vegas also quit the Navy at around the same time, although her plans were not as clear cut. So at a loose end, she took a waitressing job at a cabaret club. Here she again found plenty of male admirers, but Vegas had little interest in their advances. She remained determined to win Victor back. And you know, that's another thing. Boy, this, this story is just bringing up all kinds of stuff in my brain. Why do you want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you? When someone has broken up with me, I have never chased them. And here's another little side story. You get in Danielle's love life today. So when I was separated and divorced from my husband, I kind of not became a party girl because, you know, in my early 20s, I, I was married at 24. I, you know, was in college from 18 to 22, working full-time, um, going to school full-time. So there was really no time for, like, a big social life. And growing up with an alcoholic stepfather, I was never really one to want to drink and get drunk and all that. So I didn't do like the typical party stuff when I turned 21 in my early 20s. I didn't. I was busting ass, like trying to have something, right? So when my husband and I got divorced, I was on a bowling league with my mom, my grandmother, my uncle, and my stepfather. We bowled. There was a guy there. And this is another little learning lesson, women. I was 28. This guy had just turned 21. And he was nice, he was cute, um, and he asked me to go to the movies. Okay. I really liked this guy, and but he drank way too much. I mean, he had just turned 21, and he was taking advantage. I mean, I remember there were a couple times where he was just like stinking, falling down, drunk in a bar, and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, I'm 28 years old. I've been divorced. Like... 21 and 27. It's only seven years, but at that stage of our life, it could have been 20 years. Like, it was just so... Anyway. And we had slept together a couple times. I mean, he was 21, so he was... Yeah, okay. I don't need to go into detail. But, <laughs> but he didn't want a girlfriend. You know, I had actually come out and said, I would like to be your girlfriend. I really like this guy. He wasn't having it. He didn't want a girlfriend, so we just parted ways. And in that time, he had had surgery on his shoulder and all of this. So fast forward. Now, this was 20 years ago at this point. 
Fast forward to last year. He sends me a friend request on Facebook and I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. He sends me a private message and he's like, I just want to apologize for all those years ago when I was like a big asshole to you. He's like, I was just not ready for a girlfriend at that time. I applauded him because now he's married, has a kid and he's all good. Um, I applauded him for apologizing to me all, after all that time. Um, but again, to say... I didn't chase that person. Once he said he didn't want a girlfriend, I'm out then. Fine. Because you got to respect yourself. That's that's the bottom line too. You got to respect yourself, women. Okay. We ever going to get through this story, right? All right. So Vegas was determined to win Victor back, right? No, she shouldn't have been determined to win him back. So over the next year, her efforts in this regard would fluctuate between tearful appeals and acts of vandalism. Girl, what? Victor's car tires were slashed. His front door was smeared with peanut butter. Well, that's a new one. Wow, that would, you know what? That's pretty devious because have you ever tried to clean peanut butter off of something? Imagine your whole door being smeared with peanut butter. Hmm. Paint was splashed on his porch. The windows of his house were smashed. Not even a move to a new address could deflect this unwanted attention because Vegas simply tracked him down and the harassment continued. How do you think that doing stuff like that is going to convince someone to want to be with you? So by October 2012, Victor had taken about as much as he could tolerate. I'm sure. His move to a new apartment had failed and so had his attempts at obtaining a restraining order. He would have moved to another town were it not for his studies and his need to be close to his son. So it seemed that the only way open to him was to make peace with Vegas. That's not going to happen. No. So Vegas was ecstatic when Victor called, thrilled to accept his offer of a sit down to talk things over. Now, you know, she automatically thinks they're going to be getting back together. But he, no, 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 no. So the meeting took place at Victor's apartment on October 15th, 2012, but did not go exactly as Victor had planned. Several bottles of wine were consumed and they ended up in bed together. You fucking dummy! You big freaking dummy! Nope. No. For Vegas, it was the vindication of all of her efforts. She was back in Victor's bed, back in his heart. Mm, no, you're not. The cold light of day would bring a harsh reality to Vegas, though. Victor apologized for what had happened between them the previous evening and insisted that had, it had been a mistake, that he, he hasn't changed his stance. Like, he doesn't want to be with you, right? There was no way forward for them as a couple. He urged her, let's be friends. And her response was to storm out of the apartment, and when she returned later that afternoon, she was carrying a gun. Oh, God, here we go. On the afternoon of October 16th, 2012, residents at Victor's Imperial Beach apartment called the police to report that they had heard several, several shots fired. Officers were already en route to the scene when they received an update from dispatch. A woman named Vegas Bray had called 911 to report that her boyfriend, Victor Salcedo, had committed suicide. The cops arrived to find Vegas inside the apartment looking dazed. A 38 Special Revolver lay on the carpet. A short distance away was the victim apparently deceased. One look at the corpse told the officers that this was no suicide. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, he had been shot multiple times. If you're committing suicide, you're going to shoot yourself once. You're not. So Vegas was then taken in for questioning and she would later be charged with murder. So based on ballistics, the medical report and witness statements, San Diego detectives were able to recreate the shooting of Victor. They believe that Vegas had arrived at the apartment with the specific intention of killing Victor. Why else had she been packing a fully loaded revolver? Of course. Yeah. Vegas had drawn the gun immediately on entering the apartment and had started firing, emptying the entire chamber into his torso. Jesus. The 38 is a six-shot weapon, which means that Vegas would then have reloaded before standing over her victim and drilling three more bullets into his skull. So he was shot nine times and he never stood a chance, right? 
So as the matter headed for trial, Vegas must have realized that her ludicrous suicide story was never going to fly. He was shot nine fucking times. Someone committing suicide isn't, wouldn't be capable of shooting themselves nine times. In its place, she invented another, now claiming that she had blacked out and had no recollection of firing the weapon or even of driving to Victor's apartment. Mmm, sus. No. Her defense team sought to support this version of events by dredging up details of Vegas's troubled upbringing. Her mother had abandoned her when she was 11 years old. As a result, she had grown up with an intense fear of abandonment, a phobia that had been triggered when Victor told her their relationship was over. She had carried out the shooting under the stress of this rejection and was thus unable to form the specific intent to kill. This, the defense argued, absolved her of murder. At worst, she was guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Now, she left the apartment, she was pissed, and she came back with the intent to kill him. That's what I believe anyway. It was a spurious argument. What does spurious mean? We're going to find out. Spurious means not being, it means false or fake. Okay. So it was a false argument, but one that was taken seriously enough to delay the trial by over a year. During that time, Vegas was assessed by various experts, all of whom came to the same conclusion. Vegas had known exactly what she was doing when she pulled the trigger. Of course she did. Her intent was to kill, and she had carried out that intent with deadly efficiency. It was jealous rage that drove her, not fear of abandonment. This testimony did not sit well with the accused when it was presented in court, and she screamed at the prosecution expert, I'm not going down for something I don't remember doing. Mm, yeah, right. Unfortunately for Vegas, the jury drew a contrary conclusion from the evidence. It delivered the verdict that the prosecutor had asked for, guilty, a first degree murder. So Vegas was sentenced to life in prison. The possibility of parole was not ruled out, but Vegas must serve at least 50 years before she can be considered for early release. That would put her in her seventies before she has a chance at freedom. And I mean, you know, now she has taken a father, a father away from his son. And it seemed like he was a very charismatic person. So he had a lot of friends. I mean, that loss was def most definitely felt, you know, not to mention, like I said, his son. Now your son's going to grow up with no father. So, wow. Had you ever heard of that story? That was quite the doozy. Like I said, brought out all kinds of stuff. All right. So to end, how are we going to unfuck ourselves today? So, like I said, today is Friday, January 7th. And I like how these are very short. Okay. You're never, like never ever, acting upon life itself. What you are acting on is your opinion of life. That's why it is such a different experience for each of us. Absolutely. You know, we are all basing our reaction, our choices, our decisions on how we perceive the situation and how we perceive life. And of course, it's going to be different for everybody. I mean, so yeah, I like that one. I really am liking this calendar. I think from here on out, I'm going to have to have like a new desk calendar, something like that every single year. So I can read these at the end of the videos, but okay. I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys all have a fantastic Friday. Um, I'm probably not going to have a video tomorrow. You know, I, I base my, my channel now on Monday through Friday. If you get a video over the weekend, surprise, it's a bonus. But I have a hair appointment tomorrow and then a massage, so I don't, I don't see me doing a video. And I definitely take Sundays off because to me that's a day of no makeup, pajamas, relaxing, all of that. So, again, have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.